Welcome to our Monday Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, great start to the week. Yeah. Right? Um, so today, we've got a good one for you. Good topic to discuss. Um, so basically, I mean, are you guys confused with how to eat properly for optimal health? I mean, it's very, very confusing because anytime you read something, you go online, you listen to something, it's eat this, not that. Then the next day, it's the opposite. No, 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 don't eat that. Eat this or do this. Don't do that. And then it vice versa. I mean, even when I was just randomly plugging some, some things into the Google search, I mean, I'm, it's, it's overwhelming. And it was very comical for me for how much different information that comes up that contradicts each other. So we're going to try to simplify it for you and kind of nip some things in the bud based on our beliefs, right? I love it. Yeah, I think okay. it's a complicated topic. I'm, I certainly get confused when I think about food choices. Sure, definitely. Um, so if you guys, uh, if, if this is your first time here, thank you and welcome. You can go ahead and give us a number one in the comments, letting us know it's your first time. We love repeat viewers and we love people joining us for the first time and we hope you stay and join us again. Um, if you have not already subscribed to our channel, please do. We do these um, training sessions every Monday at noon, so you don't want to miss a new one. And also you can have access to all the other ones that we've done, some great information out there. So make sure you subscribe, like, and don't forget to leave your comments today because at the end we will address comments live. Okay, so comments, questions, whatever it is, please let us know. Okay, so today we're going to discuss what is wrong with the food pyramid? A lot, I mean, probably, I yeah. I think we all know of the food pyramid. It's what we all learned in grade school. It's still out there. Sometimes you see it on, on um, you know, I guess food labels. We're going to kind of break that down a little bit on, like, what's wrong with it. We're going to talk about our version of the food pyramid, or maybe just call it a triangle. Macronutrients, micronutrients, calories, and what live good supplements can we pull into this that can help us out? Sure. Right? So, again, eating for optimal health. And optimal health does also mean weight loss. So if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, I need to eat for weight loss. That's part of optimal health. Like we want to all eat to be healthy. Weight loss is part of that, okay? Um, okay, so let's go into just what's wrong with the food pyramid. Uh, it, it was, okay, when did the food pyramid start? Well, originally, the date. no, I know, but back in the, even the Nixon administration is back when the early like food guidance documents started to come out. And I think that was the 70s, early 70s. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so obviously a lot has changed since then. And really when, when the food pyramid was published, it's when Americans had a dramatically different view on food, right? We, we were told like, eat fat free, avoid the full fat. Um, eat the egg whites only, avoid those egg yolks. Saturated fat is horrible for you, it's gonna kill you. I mean, just so many things that we thought were right but, but they're not, and, it, and a lot has changed. And it also had a huge emphasis on carbohydrates, not really even caring where they came, where they came from, but also a big emphasis was that was on wheat. And we all know that there's a lot of negative sides to wheat, not to mention the fact that most of us have some type of intolerance from wheat, gluten, but also how wheat is so heavily treated and sprayed with glyphosate chemicals. So it's just a very different take on nutrition. And after the, the Food Pyramid came out, um, I think it was called My Plate. And that's like the newer version. If you, if you see a picture of it, it kind of breaks it down into four sections of your plate, what a plate would look like, and like a little circle for like your dairy where a glass of milk would be. But it's still, it doesn't, it doesn't distinguish between what should be going into that. So, okay, you have your little fats here, but like what kind of fat? So you have your, your protein here, but what kind? So it, it really does all matter. So I like, like to just poo-poo on all that. I don't believe in it. Uh, I wanna talk about what we feel is the most important part of a food pyramid. And it's really, again, we're calling it, it is a triangle. So our version of the food pyramid, just picture that triangle, picture the pyramid, but the each corner has some different entities. So we're just talking about our three points. So we have our macronutrients, our micronutrients, and our calories. And we're gonna, we're gonna dive into all three of those, but together that should make up how you're eating for optimal health, right? Sure. I mean, sounds simple. Of course it's not. There's more that goes into each one of those parts, but again, that's what we're gonna break it down into. But I just want you to simplify it all, because again, with all the information out there, it's very confusing, and not it's just confusing, it's overwhelming. And sometimes when we get overwhelmed, especially if it's not something we're like well-educated on, we back off. We say, I, I can't do this. You know, I know this is something I'm trying to learn that has nothing to do with like where my, you know, my, my expertise, I kind of do the same thing. 
So let's go first start into macronutrients. Yeah. Okay, macronutrients are your proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. That's it. Proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. And together, those should make up what we're eating every single day. And there, it, it's important to have them in a, in a certain proportion for optimal health and weight loss. Um, so a macronutrient is a ratio, can help with weight loss, can help with fat loss, focusing on percentage of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, um, rather than just the total number of, of calories. But calories matter, okay? So we're not, again, that's part of our triangle. Calories matter. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about ranges, percentages. It is a range, okay? It's not black and white. Everybody's very different. The way we absorb things, process things, handle things, some people are better at metabolizing fats than others, and same for carbohydrates and other carbohydrates. Um, but it's hard to really know what is going on with your body without proper expensive testing. So you kind of have to play around a little bit, do a little bit of trial and error. I have played around with my macros for a very long time. Um, I do a lot more than you. I know, you know, Ryan just kind of eats what, he gets lucky. I uh, am, yeah. He eats what I make him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but really you want carbohydrates to be about 40 to 50% of your daily calories, protein 25 to 35, fat 20 to 30. So these are ranges, right? Some of them big ranges. Me personally, I am finding that I, I like the 35 carbohydrates, 35 protein, and 30 fats. 35 protein might seem high for some, but I like my protein on the higher side, right? I, I like to focus on building muscle. It's very important to me. I know how important it should be important to you too, but it's very important for optimal health. So what works for me is not gonna be what works for you, what works for Ryan, what works for Joe, Susie, whatever it is, you have to find what works for you. So just knowing that there's some flexibility in there um, and you know, there's a great way to kind of figure this out mm -hmm. because you're probably sitting here thinking like, how am I gonna know how 30% protein? My Fitness Pal, I've got no affiliation with them. There's lots of other apps out there, I do know that. I've just stuck with my Fitness Pal. I've tried others. I just think my Fitness Pal is so user-friendly. Um, and you can also, there's a free version and you could also um, pay for, you know, the, the yearly to have a little bit more features on there. Um, I think it's worth it to pay the yearly. I don't remember what it is, maybe like $40. But I mean, that's, that's for the year. So you can plug in all of your, uh, all your food that you're eating for the day and you get to see the percentages of where you are. And of course, at first, you're not gonna hit your mark. You're gonna be all over, over, over the place. But you also need to understand what you've been doing, how you've been eating to be able to make any changes. So do I log every day now? No. But do I do check-in points? 100%. A lot of times now my check-in points, I'm pretty much where I, where I want to be because I've been doing it so long I understand throughout my day how my portion should be. And again, it's never exactly on the mark, but you, you, you want to be in that area. Um, so love my fitness pal for that. What yeah. are your, anything to add to that one? You know, not really actually, other than the fact that you're talking about percentages of macros. It, it, I think for a lot of people, they've never done it before. And so my fitness pal would be a great helpful tool for that right? right because someone like me i'm like i'm never writing down the calories my protein i'm just i just i do not do that right right um and over time i think you can figure out what your body needs what your body responds to so in the beginning maybe great just for education and learning and then you can sort of not have to work so hard at tracking right and like obviously to break down proteins carbohydrates and fats like healthy proteins it's your your lean meats your fish your chicken poultry uh, you know um red meat you, again, buying all this high quality, I can't preach that enough. But uh, you could also say, oh, I don't eat meat. Well, you know, you can also add in, there's, there's dairy products that give you the protein, um, you, beans. I mean, again, it's balancing it out. So over the course of your day, you're trying to get those proteins in. Um, but those are the main ones you wanna focus on. Carbohydrates, I always say, focus on getting your carbohydrates from like fruits and starchy vegetables. Starchy vegetables, let's think squashes, um, sweet yeah. potatoes, mm -hmm. even some potatoes, um, you know, mild grains, uh, depending on how your body can tolerate it, mm -hmm. you know, rice, oats, not everybody can deal with oats. I don't process them very well. I do rice okay. So again, mm -hmm. you just have to figure out what works for you. Some people can't tolerate beans, you know, um, you know, so bean is also protein and carbohydrates. So just kind of balancing it all out. 
and your fruits, you know, moderate amounts of fruits a day. I mean, yeah. that's where our sugar should be coming from, just sure. whole fresh fruits. And knowing that some are better than others um, when it comes to sugar content. So mm -hmm. your berries are so great, your citrus so great for you. So I, I focus on those. Um, and then fats, when you have your oils. Remember, we want to avoid the high processed seed oils, mm -hmm. inflammatory oils. So you want to think about olive oil, coconut oil, um, avocado oil. That also goes with eating avocados, eating olives, nuts, seeds, nut butters, seed butters. I mean, these are all mm -hmm. coconut, coconut flakes. I mean, all great things. And that's all very healthy stuff to fill those macros with. Um, all right, so jumping off into, let's go now to micronutrients. So sure. we talked about macronutrients, and again, this is our triangle. We're just touching each corner. Then we have micronutrients. Micronutrients are nutrients that are required by our body for its proper growth and development. They play a major role in metabolic, um, metabolic activities oh, in the yeah. body. These include our vitamins and minerals, okay? Macronutrients that are like smaller, you need them in smaller amounts, but you still need to hit your goals every day for your body to function properly. Every little part of your body is relying on the right balance of macronutrients to take its function to the next level. You are talking about macro right now, but you mean micro. I meant micro. Did yeah, I you say said macro? that two times in a row. Sorry, yeah. just because we did a whole big yeah. lengthy thing on yeah. macros. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about micros. So yeah. your, your vitamins and your minerals, 100%. Um, I could tell there was something going on because I could feel the side eye. Um, <laughs> All right, so again, our enzymes, hormones, and other substances need, need our vitamins and minerals for proper growth and development. It is so important. You could even be that person that is deficient in something so you're not losing the, proper, the weight in the right way. It just could be from a minor nutrient de de deficiency. Excuse me. Um, so most people are deficient in the, at least in the US, vitamin A, iron, and iodine. I do know, going back to my fitness pal, it does log, maybe this is the one because I, I pay for the subscription, it does give you your A, C, calcium, iron, sodium, and potassium, but that's it. It doesn't further break it down. So it is 100% hard to know, but I will tell you this. If you are eating a healthy, balanced diet, if you are eating the right portion of macros, taking from the food choices, the food groups that I just talked about, you're going to get close to that or hit that RDA of your vitamins and minerals. RDA is your recommended daily allowance. But remember this, your RDA is your bare minimum. And we're not here to do bare minimum, are mm -mm. we? No. Mm -mm. We are here for optimal health. Okay, that, seriously, that has got, like I cannot, uh, cannot emphasize this enough. Everybody thinks it's a common thing. We have the RDA, we need to hit our RDA, and then we're golden. Again, that's doing the bare minimum. When in life do you want to do the bare minimum of anything. It's almost like everything's been set that way. Even your protein goals, you're talking about 0.4 grams per kilogram. 0.8. For 0 0.8 Wait, per, yeah, sorry, right. 0.8 for every kilo, which right. would be about 0.4 per pound. But right, right, right. that's for sedentary individuals. Like, right. Why would that, ooh, like wh who does that really appeal to? Why is that your goal? Why is that your goal? Right, just, so your goal it, is not the RDA. Your goal is not the bare minimum because I know you guys are all overachievers out there. That's why you're here, you're listening, you want to do better. Exactly. The goal is optimal levels. So to reach those optimal levels, you eat healthy like we just talked about in the macronutrient category. You're gonna get those vitamins and minerals, but then you also have got to supplement with, I mean, right here I just have it, our Live Good Daily Essentials Pack. Um, if you haven't checked out our website, livegood.com, check it out. You'll find all the products that we sell, the, the healthiest, most affordable prices. Um, so take a look at that. But our daily essentials pack, and I'll just break it down for you. It's either your men's or women's multivitamin with your magnesium complex and your vitamin D3, K2. So either, either the men's or women's that makes up the three make up your daily essentials pack. That is how you're going to make sure you prevent those nutrient, nutrient deficiencies that you might have not hit the optimal levels with food. And again, it's very hard to hit optimal levels with just food alone. Because it also, you, know, you have to factor in, I mean, things like stress, deplete our nutrients. I mean, guys, we've talked about this over and over again. I'm sure, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but there's so many things in our environment that deplete our nutrients. So as we're like eating healthy and we think we're doing great and then stress is depleting it, toxins are depleting it, we are not, we're barely even meeting our RDAs. So you've got to make sure you're taking your daily essentials pack, you're taking your nutrient, I mean your vitamins and minerals to make sure you get those optimal levels. 
And I also have our children's multi here because don't forget those kids. The kids are in the same boat as us. They've got to reach those levels too. Those brains have a lot to do. Those bodies are constantly busy. Really need their um, micronutrients. Yeah. Okay, so we covered macronutrients, micronutrients, and the next one is calories. Okay. Before we go to calories, though, so on okay. the micronutrient side, you know, it, it's essential. Like a lot of these, these micronutrients, these vitamins and minerals are essential. Your body does not make them. Which so means you have to get them. You have to get them. You have to take them from uh, your diet, which we what, would love the world that we got, we get everything out of our whole foods. Now, we wouldn't have the business model we have now, but I mean, even with Lisa and I, the way we eat, the way we train, the way we work out, the way, all the things that we do, when we do micronutrient panels, metabolic testing, we're still very glaringly, it's a glaring, it's obvious, it's so clear, we still need to supplement. And so again, though, when you're in that range, we've talked about in the past about blood work and testing, you're not always at an optimal level. So even when you're eating these nutritious foods, you're possibly not at the range that you want to be. Right. So think about that as well. Um, and then when it comes to the vitamins, you know, you're talking about 13 essential, whatever it is, A, you have all your Bs, so one, two, three, five, seven, no, five, six. six, seven, nine, and 12. You have C, vitamin C is essential, D, uh, E, and vitamin K. So there's fat soluble and there's water soluble. I mean, these, these are just on the multi, just on the vitamin side. You know, those are all really, really important. That doesn't even talk, talk about the macro minerals that we're talking about. So like she talked about phosphorus, ma magnesium. Um, you, you know, these are also really, really critical. Iron, of course, is, is another one for, for certain populations that need, need more iron. Um, but when the body doesn't get it, it could go as far as a deficiency and then really become a disease process. Mm -hmm. But before it gets there, usually it's saying, well, crap, I need to get it. I need to get it from somewhere else in this blood, in this body, because I need it for this, this more important process. So it'll free it up. It'll break down bone. It'll break down muscle. It'll bro break down connective tissue. It'll, it'll virtually break down anything it needs to, to free up some of these vitamins, these minerals. Uh, amino acids, you know, th things like that. Right. So, so crazy just think, think about, about when you're not eating with like intention and, and you're not eating things that serve you, you know, you, you end up really doing more harm than good. And then lastly, before we go to calories, mm -hmm. Lisa said something about um, even healthy habits can drain your body of these, of these, these essentials. Because remember, you need to replenish these essentials. So healthy habits, you're exercising, that's pretty healthy, great, but you're de depleting the body. You're drinking uh, caffeine. We're fans of caffeine. I like coffee. I'll drink it first thing in the morning. Sure, depleting the body. You're drinking a little bit of alcohol, um, depleting the body. You know, if you have stress or like severe anxiety, you can definitely be depleting the body. If you're on a medication, right, like the stomach, the, the acid uh, reflux yeah. meds, if you're on a statin drug for cholesterol, you're on antihypertensive drugs like the diuretics or the like water pills. Um, there's so many classes of medications, and it's been a while since we talked about this, but it's a whole category called drug induced. Nutrient depletion, D-I-N-D. Email me if you want a right. list of your meds, and I'll gladly tell you what you're being depleted of. It's actually, it's published, this is published data. It's out there, guys. And so on prescription drugs, you should be immediately triggered to say, crap, I might be depleting my body of, a, of an important essential vitamin or mineral. So mm -hmm. think about all those things, put all those together, and now you can start to really see why um, we're such strong advocates for supplementing. And, yes. you know, even if it's like, of course, we love the live good essentials and there's intention behind all of this. But if it's something we don't have and that we recommend, like right now, we do not have a bone support. We don't have something that there's, there's other things to, to, to push nice that puts nicely together for bone. Um, of course, magnesium and D and just as an example. Um, but no, we would be able to advise you on, you know, your form of calcium. Is it a good form of calcium? Is that what you should be taking um, for your age, for your med medic medication history and so on and so forth? So. Sure. Long-winded answer. Yeah, but now you bring it, up some a couple other things. That, um, so the, we also have a podcast. A podcast. Uh, Do we a have training, a podcast? Well, <laughs> not yet. Please. A training that we did um, called drug-induced micronutrient depletion. So it will be drug-induced what? Micronutrient, micronutrient depletion. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it is on um, our YouTube channel. So make sure you find that and check it out because that was a, a big alarming one I know sure. for some people. And what Ryan also did made a comment at the beginning of. Um, his speech. <laughs> Is that a speech? <laughs> no. Was um, uh, the testing, micronutrient testing. So you also might be wondering, wow, how do I know what's going on? Micronutrient testing is about $300, it, not covered by insurance. A functional medical doctor, a lifestyle medical doctor, there are also some online ones that you can find um, where I, I think they send you a kit, you go to the lab, 
and they let you know, but it's a good check-in point. It's something I love doing yearly to kind of see where I'm at, if I need to tweak anything, if I need to extra supplement on something. But again, it's important to know your numbers because everybody is different. So leave it at that. All right, going to calories. Calories, we all know Ooh. calories. Unit of energy that measures how much energy food provides the body. Okay, so we all, some, well, we I all. think that's where we could stop agreeing, right? We just say, it's a, it's a unit of energy. Sure. It's a measurement of unit of energy. And then, right. and then everything goes off the rails. Right. Let's <laughs> start talking about calories. Right. It, I mean, it's a, it's a tricky thing. So because they can do good for you and they could um, harm you. So if you think about that, calorie deficit. So say you want to lose weight. You obviously need to be in a calorie deficit. Whether that comes from eating less calories every single day or burning a little more calories through your daily movement or a combination of both. So say, you know, a typical calorie deficit for a day for weight loss is like three to 500 calories. Nothing super extreme because this is a patient process. We're not supposed to lose weight overnight. Okay, one to two pounds a week when you're on a weight loss program is, is um, healthy, right? Anything beyond that can be a little bit too much and be unhealthy for the body. So be patient with the process. So again, 300 to 500 calories about, this is average, per day that you would cut in some way, shape, or form. So say you want to do combination. I'm going to eat 150 calories less per day, and I'm going to move my body a little more so I burn an extra 150 calories per day, leaving you in a 300 calorie deficit. Okay, so again, right now I'm talking about weight loss. If your goal is weight gain, you, know, you want to be in a little bit more of a debt. You got to pay attention to what you're eating. You got to eat a little bit more each day. Wait, you want to be aware if, if your goal is weight gain? Kind of calorie, <laughs> to eat more calories, <laughs> not a deficit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We've been having word wordsmithing, yes. wordsmithing yes. all morning. It's um, kind of like one of those days. It's actually been the whole past week, and I think it's because the whole kids back in school, new routines. I feel like my brain has you know, you flip -flopping been words cut in lot. half a little bit. Um, so you want to be eating more calories than you're burning, but again, you're not going to sit here and, and jump the gun and you're going to eat an extra thousand calories a day. Again, it's a little bit each day, right? Um, okay. Talked about the calorie deficit, what else do I, oh, so um, you might be thinking too, how do I know how many calories I should be eating in a day? Say I want to gain weight or lose weight or stay where we're at. Yes. It is definitely hard to know. Uh, there's calculators out there. Um, My Fitness Pal also does one where you plug in your information, your age, your weight, your height, your activity level, and it kind of gives you a roundabout. And then it will ask you, if you want to lose weight, gain weight, or stay the same, okay? That's a kind of a rough one, right? It's general, but that's the best that can be done unless you go and do metabolic testing, which again, testing is great. It's wonderful to know your numbers. It's basically going to tell you your resting metabolic rate, which is how many calories you burn at rest. Um, not something you need to test all the time, but if you ever wanted to do it to just get a feel, I mean, Google metabolic testing, find one in your area. Um, yeah, that's really the best way to know. Um, so in cal uh, a calorie, all calories are not equal. So No, that's I what mean, I was trying to say. Yeah, there's, there's like blank calories, right? They're calories that add no nutritional value. Sure. We want to avoid those. Okay, those, I didn't talk about anything that was like that in our macronutrients or proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. I basically filled those categories with the healthy things that you need to be eating. That's where your calories need to come from. Because the body, our bodies don't process calories the same. Even the sense that we don't process proteins, carbohydrates, and fats the same, right? A lot of times protein takes a little bit longer to metabolize. That's why it keeps us full longer. Um, same, same thing with fats. So again, each calorie. I, look, you can't say that enough times. Yeah. I, I think that 100 calories, 100 calories of, say, a cruciferous vegetable, whether it's ca cauliflower or broccoli or something, and 100 calories of some whatever. Oh, my gosh. You know what really killed America with this? Packaged. Those 100-calorie packaged, like, Oreo cookies, 100-calorie packaged Chips Ahoy. Right. So, and we're all thinking, woohoo, we're eating just 100 <laughs> calories. <laughs> but if you look at it, though, so like bad. the phytonutrients, the, den the, the nutrient density, um, doesn't even come close. It's like not even in the same, you can't even compare it, right? So yeah. when people are talking about, 
which by the way, meat, healthy lean meats are loaded with phytonutrients. I think people, that gets lost on people. They don't realize that those animals are eating plants and there are, and some studies have shown that more, there's more higher phytonutrient concentration in some meats than there are actually eating some plant, right? 100%, so even especially like it's organs. It's very fascinating. People especially get it. organs? Yeah, exactly. Like, so the nutrient density is a huge, huge part of it. So eating with intention, guys, is so yes. important. And of course, enjoy your food. You just shouldn't suffer eating. I mean, there's plenty of stuff out there you can get creative. And then, I don't know if we're done or not, but sourcing locally, the fruit company, you're talking about fruit, and uh, Patrick too, probably, he's cool. He, but, you, you know, eat more fruit, eat more raw dairy. Yes, yes. Fruit local, dairy local. Try to source local. Be a little bit more active in your local community. There's no need to source some rare fruit from 1,200, 1,500 miles away that, you know, just whatever. It, or some pre, prematurely ripened, uh, artificially ripened tomato or something. So source local when you can, please. Yes. I think this is funny right here. Yeah. How do you do it? Take your methylene blue for your brain, particularly with the change in schedules. Yes, I took mine this morning. Oh. Um, I actually <laughs> should be taking it every day this like this week, That's good. and then taking a week off just I to kind of like fire me up. But I agree 100%. It was funny. I went and stepped in my sauna this morning. I thought, oh, whoops, I got back out, went and took my methylene blue. Um, so great point. Uh, before we get into questions or, or further comments, uh, I did not talk about our protein powders. We do have a vanilla and chocolate, one vegan, one way, both equally delicious just depends on your preference, um, but these can really help you hit your protein macronutrient daily. It, 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 sometimes it's very hard, and I've had people email me and say like, how on earth do you get 150 to 160 grams of protein a day? And I'll break it down, but it will always include one to two scoops of these guys. Oh yeah. So, I mean, this morning I did a scoop of the vanilla and half a scoop of chocolate in my shake. Oh, I man. Like the, uh, combo. I'm like telling the combo. you, that combo serves me so well, the d different release. I can feel a difference. And it mm -hmm. might sound crazy, like, how can you possibly? I'm telling you, satiety, different, like, level of, I just feel different since I've combined the, the, the whey protein with the plant. Right. Well, I feel like when I have the whey alone, um, I'm hungrier quicker after. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I know, mm. I know, I don't know. It yeah, it doesn't make a like lot of sense the considering the fact that I thought that was more slower release. But when I combine the two, I don't know, I feel pretty solid. Maybe it's also just the extra protein. But yeah, so always um, a great supplement to reaching your, your protein goals. Again, supplements to a healthy diet, guys. These are not replacements. Right. But again, if, if you're short on, I mean, this is 20 grams of protein per scoop of each. I mean, it really, really, really significantly helps. Not to mention, I throw it in everything that I can. Anytime I bake, anytime I make pancakes, right. muffins. We just got the our cream, Nindra, Nindra creamy. creamy. So we're making our own um, homemade Protein ice, ice cream. cream and using the scoops in there. I mean, it's delicious. The kids love it, and you feel much better about eating it. And loving the fact that now science supports eating more protein per serving so that you still are, it's still digestible. You can still absorb it. So I've been loading some protein on the back end, right. of a, even of a dinner. You know, stop eating dinner early, a couple hours before bed, and then you can load that protein. Mm -hmm. And man, help you hit your goals. Definitely. You're not putting on a ton of calories, not putting in a ton of calories. So I think it's a win-win. I don't right. know. How else, how else would you do it? I mean, otherwise, you're going to really just be like loading up on, on poultry, right? Right. Um, yeah, we have 30. So the protein will be 30 yes. servings in a bag, organic. We're switching it to an organic. Yeah, he says, so the vanilla protein powder is now in a bag, correct? It, yes. Yep, um, starting next week. Yeah, not available yet. So we still have, week. we don't have this it. Week. We don't even have it in our hands. No. Mm -mm. So yes, the, the vanilla, this is only a 15 serving. The vanilla is going in a bag similar to our chocolate, and it's going to be 30 servings. So, which is so exciting because I know with both, my whole family uses the vanilla one a lot because that's the one we, we bake with a lot. We go through this so quickly, so it is nice to have the bag, 30 servings. Guys, you're awesome. Thank you for all the, sweet, the comments. I could post them all if I could make it through them, but yeah. Any questions? No, you guys didn't ask a lot of questions. Everybody okay. just comments. Yeah. Appreciate everybody chiming in, though. It's so um, incredibly helpful. Yeah, it's very nice. And if you did have a question that was not necessarily pertaining to the exact topic, I'm always available via email, lisa at livegood.com. Please send me your questions, um, comments, whatever it is, product, health-related. Um, love to help you out. If it ends up being a medication one, you can also send it to me, and then I'll just talk with 
with Dr. Ryan over here to make sure I'm giving you the proper answers because that's where um, he knows the most. Yeah, let me know too if you guys want to talk, if you ever want to have uh, some feedback on the drug-induced nutrient depletion. Watch the video first, yes, first to get yourself video, up to speed. And then uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out. Yes. All right. Awesome. And like always, again, check us out, livegood.com. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you're not following us on, um, well, this is also oh. Instagram and Facebook, make sure you follow us there. Lots of great information. And emails, ryan at livegood.com, lisa at livegood.com. We'll do our best to get back to you. And yes. uh, like she said, please follow, please subscribe. It, uh, it, it, it matters. It makes a big difference mm -hmm. for all of us. So. And it also helps us get viewed by more people. And that's our goal, right? We want to educate. And Share real quick, the there's a question here. Probiotics will be out this week. Gut support's coming this week. And the updated 30-serving USDA certified organic vanilla protein will be out this week as well. And um, that's it, guys. I think we're done here. Awesome. Thank you for joining us this Monday. Until next Monday. Oh, next week, we do have, this is what we do, the last Monday anything. of every month, we do an AUA, Ask Us Anything. So come to the table with questions because we spend the whole about 30 minutes going through all different kinds of health-related questions with you. All right? So until then, see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Later.